For many people going on a cruise, it is their first time leaving their home country. It's their first time exposing themselves to a foreign land, going to a foreign port. Unfortunately, there are people out there that are looking to scam travelers. In this video, we're going to talk about 10 common travel scams that could happen to you when you're traveling abroad. We're going to jump into it right after this. Hey, 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 what's up everybody? Tony with La Lida Loco. Welcome to the YouTube channel. If you're brand new here and you enjoy cruising content, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of our new videos. So like I said in the intro, uh, cruising is often the way that people leave the United States for the first time, the first time they go out of the country. Culturally, the United States Travel to foreign countries is not as prevalent as other places in the world. I think it's primarily due to geography. The United States is a huge land mass. Of course, we have 50 states, and many of those states are as large as countries in Europe and countries in other places in the world. And so, like I said, culturally, a lot of times Americans will travel between states the same way that Europeans travel between countries. Uh, interesting statistics on U.S. passports. Of course, they're on the rise. But I think it's only like 25 or 30 percent of the people have passports and that that rise has just happened over the last few years as more people start to explore traveling to different countries. So traditionally we stay in the United States, travel state to state. And so what's interesting with cruising is it provides an opportunity to go to foreign lands. Uh, my personal story in my life, I'm 48. Uh, prior to cruising, I had been to Canada once and I'd been to Mexico a handful of times for my job and that was it. Most everywhere else that I'd been had been traveling within the United States. But now that I've gone on a cruise, I've been to several different countries in the Caribbean primarily and it's, uh, it, it could be a culture shock if you're not used to going to different places and interacting with different cultures. And then you add the factor that cruising is a tourist activity and many people in the locations where you go to port make their money off tourism and there's a tourism focus. It's an interesting mix and it does provide an environment where travel scams can prosper. Let's jump into the list. Number one, let's talk about taxi scams. Many times when you go to a cruise port, you have to get around. If you don't have a prearranged tour, if you haven't done something with the cruise ship, you will probably have to take a taxi. What is great is in most places, I'm thinking of Cozumel, I'm thinking of Grand Turk, places like that, they have pre-arranged cab pricing for certain locations. So if you go to Cozumel and you wanna to go to Mr. Sancho's, when you leave the port, there's a cab stand there, all the prices are listed, it says Mr. Sancho's $15. So you can get into the cab with some sort of confidence of knowing that you can you know that you only owe the $15 going to Mr. Sancho's. That's the best taxi scenario. That's what you're looking for, but sometimes you'll just have to jump into a cab where the meter is going to determine how much you pay. And sometimes there's some unscrupulous taxi drivers that will claim that their meter is broken. They will drive you to a location and they will overcharge you for that fare. You also have taxi drivers that will take the long way to get you to where you want to go so that they can run up the meter price. When you go to these cruise ports, when you're taking a taxi, the best course of action is to find the official taxi stand, look for prices, or if you find a taxi where prices are not listed, you want to pre-negotiate how much you're going to pay for your ride. That way you don't have any trouble. You want to determine on the front end exactly what you'll pay, and that way you avoid this ability to get scammed once you get to your location. Another interesting thing that can happen when you get into a taxi and you tell them that you want to go to one location, they might suggest that you go to another location. Sometimes the taxi driver has an agreement with a, an attraction and they will pay them a commission to bring you to their location. And so you could have a situation where a taxi driver would want to dissuade you from going to one place just so they can take you to another place, not necessarily because the other place is better, but because they might have some sort of financial gain for taking you to the other place. So it's important to know before you get into a cab exactly where you want to go. You know, be polite, but uh, don't be surprised if once you get into the cab, it becomes a negotiation. You want to make sure that you are assertive, letting them know where you want to go, get that prearranged price, and that's going to minimize your ability to get scammed. Scam number two, 
kind of related to the taxi scam. It is the closed attraction scam. You might jump into a cab, you say you want to go to a certain location. Again, the taxi driver might have a financial incentive to take you somewhere else, so they might tell you the place that you want to go is closed. A variation I've heard of this are locals who hang out near like city maps. You're trying to find your way to a certain attraction. There's a city map there that's going to guide you there. There will be helpful locals that will tell you the attraction that you're looking for is closed and that you should go somewhere else. Again, most of the time, there are good Samaritans out there. I don't want to discount that. But again, be mindful that when you go to these areas where there are tourists, where much of the economy is run off of tourism, and there's a lot of people vying for your tourism dollars, there are tactics employed to get you to one attraction opposed to the other. And unfortunately, one of the unethical ones, one of the scammy ones, is to maybe tell you that the popular attraction is closed, that you can't go there and uh, point you somewhere else. So just be mindful, uh, do your research in advance, know what's open, know what's not open, and you've got to start to judge uh, people a little bit to understand whether they're telling you the truth, which isn't always easy. Uh, when you're on vacation, when you're in a new location, when you're dealing with that anyway. So be on the lookout for the closed attraction, the closed location scam. So number three is the shady ATM scam. Again, a lot of times you will get to a port location and you could realize that you did not bring enough cash to deal with everything that you want to deal with. You find some souvenirs that you want to buy. Maybe you've spent more money on food and drink than you thought and you find yourself short on cash and you start looking around for ATMs. It's a common scenario and because it's a common scenario, scammers, unscrupulous people will set up environments so that they can do financial damage to you because simply you need an ATM. The main takeaway is when you use an ATM in a foreign port, you want to find something that seems official. Uh, again, it's hard to tell, but you want to find a bank, find some sort of financial institution, find uh, something that you know that you're familiar with that you can make an ATM transaction. Because what happens, these scammers will set up fake ATMs. I read a story about where you actually had to swipe your ATM card to get into the booth to use the ATM. And in that swipe to even get into the booth to use the ATM, they were capturing your uh, card data. And then these scammers would use that to kind of clean out your bank accounts while you're wandering around in port. So, be super careful when you are using any of your financial uh, instruments, whether it's your debit card, your credit card, make sure that you're using them in places that seem legit. And probably the best rule of thumb is to take the cash that you're gonna use at port and uh, just use that cash. Avoid using your credit card and your debit card unless you're 100% sure that the place is legit and you're not gonna get scammed. So the number four scam deals with money. I did just say bring cash to port, that that's the best way to go, but you do have to be careful when you are transacting business with cash. Uh, especially you have to be mindful when you are making transactions with shop owners that you get the correct change back. It's so easy to pay with a certain denomination and then to get short changed. Again, you're excited to be on vacation, you're excited to be making a purchase, and if you don't pay attention, you could get shortchanged by an unscrupulous store owner or you could get shortchanged just by mistake. The one thing that I try to do when I go to foreign ports and I buy souvenirs, most of these shops uh, are negotiable. And so what I try to do is I try to negotiate a price that matches up exactly with the amount of money that I have or that I'm willing to spend. So say something comes out to $6.80, uh, I will say, look, I, can we do this transaction for $6? Or maybe I'll pay the 20 cents not to worry about it. Can we do this transaction for $7? I try to make an arrangement for the transaction that matches up uh, you know, the exact money so I don't have to worry about this change. Again, you just wanna pay super attention uh, if you're paying with a certain denomination, you can say it out loud just to key in to the uh, shop owner that you're thinking about your money. Here's a 20 for this $10 purchase. Those kind of things, just to give off the signals that you are situationally aware that you know what's going on with your money and maybe that will dissuade anybody that wants to do something unscrupulous towards you uh, from doing that because they recognize that you are on the lookout. Uh, for scam. All right, so number five, I want to kick off by talking about some of these getting bumped into scams. Uh, just the big overall takeaway is when people start touching you, bumping into you, rubbing up against you, 
that is the precursor for getting things stolen from you. Uh, this is a technique that pickpockets use. This is a technique that people are gonna grab your bag and run use. And so any situation where you're in a crowd and people start rubbing and bumping up against you, it is best if you can find a way not to be in that situation. And there's a few scams that spring out of that. So number five is the, hey, there's something on your shirt scam. Now the way this works is the scammer will try to put something on your clothing, uh, bust a mustard pack, wipe something on you, and then they will come up to you with the guise of trying to help you clean your shirt. Oh, I see you've got something on your shirt. Let me help you wipe that off. Hey, maybe you wanna take your backpack off so that we can get this clean. And it's in that moment of them helping you where the opportunity to be pickpocketed or your bag to be stolen occurs. Uh, if they can get you to take your backpack off and it's hanging there loose, a lot of times they'll be working with somebody that will swing by and grab your stuff. So be super cautious. If somebody tells you there's something on your shirt, uh, that they need to clean something up, the best course of action if somebody approaches you that way is to say thank you and then to go somewhere and clean that yourself. Uh, again, it's, it's sad that there's this unscrupulous uh, you know, thing coming at you in the guise of help, but it is a technique that's used to separate you from your valuables. Number six is another kind of in your space, touchy grabby, type interaction and it also tugs on the heartstrings because they will use children to separate you from your stuff. Many times when you walk through a port of call, you will be approached by groups of children that are wanting something, would like money from you, maybe they're holding signs. All the while when this group of kids surrounds you, it gives this touch opportunity for them to take your stuff. Now, it's super hard because who doesn't like to help kids? And so you have to be on the lookout. Uh, I'm a big advocate of generosity. You will run into many situations where you see people that are impoverished, you'll see people that are downtrodden, and you will see people that are asking for money. And you really have to uh, pay close attention and decide if you're going to help and how you're going to help. But the situations that I would avoid is anybody who invades your personal space looking for a donation. Be leery of crowds of children and find a way to extract yourself from that. Make sure that you've got all your valuables. And look, I'm, I'm not saying don't help out, but you have to find the right way to help out. And you don't want to be taken advantage of because of your kindness toward others. Number seven is the bracelet scam or the trinket scam. What happens in this scam is you are approached by individuals. Sometimes they use a technique called the what time is it technique. They'll ask you what time it is and when you go to look at your watch, they will slap a bracelet on your watch or they'll put a trinket in your hand and they'll say, no, no, it's free, don't worry about it. However, when you try to exit the situation, they want you to pay for the bracelet, they want you to pay for the trinket, and they will cause a scene if you do not do so. Uh, they use this what time is it scam, they will just walk up in your personal space and try to put the bracelet on you. It's a really uncomfortable situation. And again, it's one of those things where the red flag immediately goes off when people try to invade your personal space. Again, anytime that somebody is purposefully touching you that you don't know, there's a good chance that there's something going on that you need to be aware of. You have to be assertive with the bracelet scam people. Please don't put that on me. Do not put that on me. Pull your arm away. Again, you don't want to get into some sort of altercation in a foreign port, but you have to be assertive enough not to be taken advantage by these scammers. And uh, definitely don't give in. This enables them to continue to do the bracelet scam, but just be on the lookout. The number eight scam I want to talk about is the souvenir switcheroo. The souvenir switcheroo is pretty simple. You go to a souvenir shop or you buy something off the street. You pick out the perfect thing that you want and then the shop owner says, let me wrap that up for you. They take the item to the back or they take it to where you can't see it. They wrap it up, they box it up and they give it to you. And then when you get back to your cruise ship or when you get home, you open it up and you realize that they haven't given you what you paid for. Maybe they've given you a broken version of what you paid for, or maybe you bought something expensive and they've replaced it with something else. Or worse yet, maybe they have just put nothing in the box, a box of rocks. You wanna make sure in these situations that you can keep eyes on the souvenir that you bought at all time. Or if you're in a scenario where the shop owner takes your item where you can't see it and wraps it up and presents it to you wrapped up, you might just say, oh, I, I, I gotta check this out again. The souvenir is so cool. Go ahead and take a look at it again before you leave the shop. That way you can assure yourself that you have exactly what you paid for 
and you're not getting scammed. Number nine scan I wanna talk about is renting vehicles in foreign lands. It's a popular thing to rent mopeds and scooters and ATVs and potentially cars when you go to these cruise ports. Just realize that the control of all of that is there with the rental car company and you're kind of at their mercy. And the way the scam works is this, you rent a moped and you bring it back without incident and the rental owner says, oh, these dents are now on this moped that weren't there when you left. You need to pay us X amount of dollars or we're not gonna let you leave. We're gonna call the police. And in many of these foreign lands, you can go to jail for not paying on the spot for the damage of these rental vehicles and you'll have to languish in a foreign jail until you can figure out how to pay for this damage or some other way out of it. Uh, a good rule of thumb here is anytime that you're renting a vehicle in a foreign land to take pictures of the vehicle before you leave so that you have photographic proof that the vehicle looked exactly the same when you brought it back as you did before. You can also leverage travel insurance to pay for damage. You just wanna make sure that your travel insurance has a rental rider on it or possibly look at your own auto coverage and see if there is any kind of rental rider for renting vehicles in a foreign land. You gotta do all that stuff prior to cruising but if you have any plans on renting a vehicle, you want to make sure that you've got some form of insurance and you want to make sure you're super diligent to take pictures of the vehicle when you pick it up and when you return it to try to avoid this rental damage scam. And before I get to number 10, let me just share some personal experience. There are cruise ports that you will go to where you will run into super aggressive vendors. Uh, I'm thinking of Nassau being one. I'm thinking of parts of Havana, Cuba as one where you will get off the cruise ship and before you can make it to the main section, you will be bombarded with people that want your tourism dollars. Uh, as soon as you get off the port there in Nassau, before you can even go through the customs building, there are a line of people that want to take you to a beach. They want to take you on a tour. And these aren't people that will come up and touch you. I don't think these are people that are scammers, but they do employ some techniques that are fairly frustrating. They will stand in front of you and engage you in conversation. And even if you say, no, thank you, you still have to figure out a way to get around them. And so that could be a challenge. I just want to give you a heads up. What I kind of do is I, I just keep my head down. I walk right by them. I will say, no, thank you. I don't, I don't like to be dismissive of people, but man, I hate that situation where somebody is blocking me and I've got to explain to them why I don't want to use them. Uh, you know, it's one of those deals. It's one of those sales techniques where sometimes you just give in and you use them because they're persistent enough to block you from moving forward. They'll run into places where there's people that will come close to you can I braid your hair? Can we do these kind of things? And they don't actually come into your personal space. They don't touch you. Again, I don't feel like that's too scammy, but that is an aggression that you will have to deal with uh, sometimes in the cruise port. Number 10 scam to be on the lookout for is the happy volunteer, the happy photographer. Many times you will find this around popular attractions. If you are somewhere where pictures are being made frequently, you might find some local that is happy to volunteer to take your group photo or take your couple's photo. And they want you to hand their camera over to them and take the photo. The challenge here is there are some people that are doing this as a way to steal people's electronics, to steal people's cameras. You need somebody to help you take pictures or you're never gonna be in the picture with your spouse or your family. And so you, again, this is one of those situations where you have to use your judgment. Uh, maybe a good rule of thumb is Ask somebody that you feel like could take the picture for you. Be leery of people that are volunteering to take the picture for you. You will run into some people that have no negative motives that will want to take your picture. A lot of times what we do is we look for people that are trying to get their picture made and then we trade it off that way. You can see a couple that needs a picture of the same thing we're trying to get a picture of and you have that little dialogue. You might see their uh, lanyard that they were on a cruise ship. Hey, can you take our picture? We'll take your picture. You gotta work it out like that, but be super leery of just a stranger standing around a popular attraction just offering to take group pictures. It could be an opportunity where you're gonna get something stolen, where you could get scammed. Okay, so those are 10 fairly common travel scams. Have any of those happened to you? What's a scam that you encountered that wasn't on this list? Leave a comment below. Let's continue the conversation. Thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button. And if you want some more travel videos, they're gonna pop up here and there's a playlist in the description below. Again, Tony from La Lida Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.